Number 13 then, from paper 2 of the 2022 National 5. Just a little two-mark question here for manipulating trigonometrical expressions. It's not quite the trig identity question, because it hasn't told you what it's equal to. For you to show that, you've just to simplify this expression. The main thing here is that line extends under both of the terms in the numerator. That cos x divides both of them. So if there's any simplification to be done, it'll be divide the top, both parts on the top, by cos x. So it means you've got sin x over cos x, and you've got 2 cos x over cos x. They're not going to penalise you for not putting in the wee degree signs, I put them in anyway. Now, doing that, separating it, doing what that means, that line means both of them gets divided. That's the mark. Sine over cos, you should recognise as tan. And of course, those parts, whatever they are, since they're the same, will divide out, leaving just two. And there's the final mark. Now, there is another way of doing this, which is to sort of go back to the basics of how you arrived at the original trigonometrical identities that you know. The sine over cos makes tan, and the sine squared and cos squared equals one which is to sort of take an x-ray of this and look at their bones and then play with their bones to get the result. And what I mean by that is, if you were to go back to the original definitions of sine and cosine, if you were to reconstruct the right angle triangle involving x, which they came out of, then for this angle, to make a sine, that's the opposite over the hypotenuse. To make a cosine, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what you could do, in simple cases, I suppose, we'd be to say, right, what have we got? Well, sine of x will be the opposite over the hypotenuse. Two times. The cosine of x will be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And same again here. The cosine of x is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. You could do that, and that would be like the first mark. And then rearrange that algebraically. Now, you've got fractions as part of fractions. You've got a complicated fraction here. Rather than adding and dividing fractions, what you would do is you'd simplify that fraction. Now you can either multiply the top and the bottom or divide the top and the bottom to arrive at an equal fraction. Here, it'd be appropriate to multiply the top and the bottom. If you multiplied everything in the top and everything in the bottom by h, then those parts would cancel out and you just end up with o, which stood for opposite, plus 2a over a. Then, splitting that as before into the two parts, you've got o over a plus 2 times a over a, which will just cancel out. I'll just put it down anyways because I'll have to use another line here. Now, o over a, opposite over adjacent is tangent. And a over a, doesn't matter what they are, they're, they're the same, so they'll cancel out, plus 2 as before. So number 14 then, the last question. Well, for five marks this time, so it's this scalene triangle one. There'll be your sine rules and cosine rules and so on. Well, what have we got here? This is sort of a practical situation. It's difficult to measure the width of a river, but you can easily measure things on land, although that 15 metres, again, will just be taken as exact here. So, given that, you measured the angle of elevation to this tree, and again, the height of the tree doesn't really matter. It's just a reference height. You measure the angle of elevation to the tree. You move to the river bank, which was a distance of 15 metres. You measure the angle of elevation again this time, and this time it's increased to 28 degrees. And that's sufficient information to work out the width of that river. Well, you've got three triangles here. You've got a small right angle triangle, a large right angle triangle, and a scaling triangle. And in the end, you want this length BC, which means ideally you'd be using this triangle because that's the one that involves it, but you haven't got enough information in it. In order to work out that length in this right angle triangle one, I'll need one more length. Well, you could get that length from this triangle. So use this triangle, first of all, as an intermediate step. Whoops, that's not very really neat with 15 metres there, 12 degrees 
there using the triangle ACD. Use this triangle to work out this length, to work out AC. That's the one I want. Now, that's not enough information yet. You need three bits of information in a triangle, but you know this extra angle. If that's 28, then the angle on the other side will be 180 minus the 28. So I'll put that work on the side. 180 minus the 28 will be the 152. So I can put that in, 152. Now, as soon as you've got two angles, you can work out the third angle because those two add up to 164, so you've still got 16 degrees left. Now you've got enough information. Now, there's no marks for actually... Well, that's the sort of crucial bit here, you know. Getting the, getting the information in this triangle so you can work out this length to pass on. But they're not going to give you a mark until you've actually written out the sign rule for it. Now, the sign rule just goes in pairs. Side over the sign of the corresponding angle is the same for all three parts. So, if I want AC, I'm going to put this down. AC over the sign of its angle, the angle opposite, which is sine 12, will be the same as the one that I know. 15 over the sine of its angle, which is 16. That gets the mark, just for stating the two parts of the sine rule. Now the sine rule goes A over sine A, B over sine B, C over sine C, or in this case, D over sine D. Then you pick out the known pair, which identifies this as being the sine rule. The pair that you want being the opposite pair that you know, and this is the opposite pair you know here, the 16 and the 15. You know that pair. And then, which is the one that you want? Well, the 12 is the one that will give this one. So, writing down the sine rule gets your mark. Now you just need to rearrange that to find AC. So, AC is going to be 15 sine 12 over sine 16. Now, you could leave that alone, but there is a mark for working out, but you could leave that alone and just transfer that as the value, which is still exact, into the right angle triangle. But I'll just go ahead and press the buttons anyway. So, pressing the buttons gives me 11.314 and so on. Now, I'm probably going to give my answer to one decimal place. So I think I'll just keep this a wee bit more accurate than that. So I'm just going to say AC equals 11.31 metres for that mark. I could have kept that in the next calculation because I've still got that stored until I press that equals button. Now that you know AC, now you know that's 11.31, you can now transfer into this triangle and just use ordinary trigonometry, right angle trigonometry to get, the, to get the length of that river. Because the river, along with the 11 and the 28, make the cosine. You've got the length of the river, I'll just call that BC, over the 11.31, the ratio of those two sides is the cosine of 28 degrees. So that BC is just going to be 11.31 cos 28. Now here's where you could just have kept that exact because that's still stored and then just do answer times cos 28 degrees. Or since that's still there you would just have to do times cos 28 degrees. So pressing the buttons and you get 9.9900 and so on. That's just using the answer function rather than typing that in. So width is 9.9, we'll go for 9.99 metres, giving it three figures. Now I've missed out loads of the marks here. There was one mark just for using the sign rule with the appropriate pair. You know, the pair that you know and the pair that involves the one that you want. There was also a mark for rearranging that to read AC equals and then a mark for the answer. There was a mark for using the right angle triangle now with either the cosine, or you could have used the sine, but then you'd have had to work out the corresponding angle here, which would have been 62 degrees. So you could have had that over 11 as the sine of 62. Either way, you get that mark, and then one mark just for rearranging that and pressing the buttons and putting down the answer with the correct units, of course, and also a reasonable number of figures. Now, another route would have been this, because this final step involves this right-angle triangle. You could have used your scalene triangle, 
instead of finding this side of the small right angle triangle, which is this root, you could have used this scaling triangle to find this side, which instead of being the hypotenuse of the small triangle, is the hypotenuse of the larger triangle. So this first step would have been, instead of working out AC, I'm not going to put it all down, you'd work out AD. So it would have said AD over the sine of 152 equals this, and you'd have worked out AD. And then in this part, now you're looking at the big triangle with the angle of 12 in it, not 28. But you wouldn't have had BC though, that's the problem, you'd have had BD because you're using the big triangle. You'd have had BD over that would have been the cos of 12. So you'd have worked out BD, then you'd have had the extra step of having to then take away the 15 to get BC. So it's probably quicker doing this, just taking these two triangles. Now, there is another way of doing it without having to use scaling triangles with sine rules and cosines and so on. There is a way of doing it just using simple right angle triangles, which would be to equate the two right angle triangles to the height of the tree. So the height of the tree in the smaller triangle would be the tree over BC, I'll just call that W here for simplicity. The height of the tree over W would be the tangent of 28. In other words, the tree is going to be W tan 28. So the height of this tree is going to be equal to W tan 28, which is also equal to you know, the tree over the whole length the height of the tree over W plus 15 is the tangent of 12. So the height of the tree would be W plus 15 times the tangent of 12. So you could have done this. I wouldn't have done this. I'd have just used the scaling triangle and, and done the arithmetic. But you could have done this. So it doesn't involve sine rules and cosines. And then just solve that equation. So notice you just have to multiply this bracket out and then bring the w's over here. I'll just save a line. So you've got w tan 28 and this w tan 12 would come over. And that would leave 15 tan 12. That's splitting this up. w tan 12 plus 15 tan 12. Taking out the w, leaving the tan 28 minus the tan 12 equals 15 tan 12 and then finally W will be though you could have just done this in one go you could have realised they would come out and go underneath 15 tan 12 over tan 28 minus tan 12 and it looks a lot worse when you put it down this way this is the sort of thing you would do algebraically in more advanced questions. Now you just press the buttons. Then you press the buttons and you get the answer 9.9900, obviously as before. I just put that down as a matter of interest, of a way of doing that without involving scaling triangles.